Hello everyone, welcome to IEEE Solid State Circuit Society CICCX 2017. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about the path to fully integrated voltage regulator, the needs and the enablers. As we all know, in this era of the Internet of Everything, where the number of smart connected devices is increasing rapidly from the components surrounding you in the room or the building to the devices to help you get the information from your car, your trees, plants, water supply, and livestock. And for some people, to implantable devices inside your body. Together with these devices, their electronics need to be smaller, more efficient, and more flexible. As a key part of these systems, their power supply solution also needs to be very compact, efficient, scalable, and fast transient response. This slide shows how power management is done in today's smartphones using iPhone 5, iPhone 6, iPhone 7 as examples. They also represent a similar trend in many Internet of Everything devices. As you can see, on these iPhone boards, the power management area circled in red rectangle here are actually occupying a significant area of the board. Now if we zoom in further, we'll see that the majority of this area for power management unit are occupied by the discrete passive components. These discrete passive components, including inductors and capacitors, do not scale because they have a certain package size and they are undesirable because of the area consumption. So the reason why we have a lot of these discrete components is because the number of voltage rails required by the system increasing rapidly. We cannot just support one single power supply for the whole system anymore because that will result in a significantly wasted energy. But we want to be able to individually manage the power supply to each of the chip, even each of the core and each of the GPU and the blocks inside the microprocessor chips so that we can individually and independently manage the power of each block so that to improve the uh, efficiency of the whole system. Now, if we are actually doing this from the conventional power management methods, that we have a single power management IC, and then we have a large network of all the off-chip passive components here, then we end up with what we saw earlier on the board, that the majority of the board area is dominated by the discrete passive components, and they are totally undesirable. So one of the methods to actually reduce the passive components is a single inductor multiple output DC-DC converter. A single inductor multiple output DC-DC converter operate in the way that in the first part of the cycle, the energy is saved in the inductor in terms of current, and then in the second part of the cycle, the charge saved in the inductor now distributes to the outputs sequentially. The converter can also be operated uh, in the way that in the first cycle, the energy is saved in the inductor and distributed to uh, the first uh, number of the outputs. And then in the second cycles, the energy is again saved in the inductor and transferred to the rest of the outputs. So the first integrated circuit paper in single inductor multiple output DC converter was published in 2002. And since 2007 of this single inductor multiple output DC converter, there were a lot more papers published for single inductor multiple outputs with all the techniques related. Now, since we already use one single inductor to support multiple outputs, the next step that we can think of for uh, miniaturization is to completely remove all the off-chip passive components, and that what we call fully integrated voltage regulators. In this fully integrated voltage regulators, all the passive components can be integrated onto the power management IC, or even better, if we can integrate the power management and passive components onto the same chip with the microprocessor or the system on chip as the SOC, then that means at the input of the chip we have only one global power supply 
and then locally we can have integrated voltage regulator that regulates uh, a certain voltage required by the loading circuits. In this way, we will not have any external off-chip discrete components and we can call this one a zero mass solution. It can free the board space for other features or for more battery so that we can increase the battery lifetime. It will help the device to be smaller, thinner, lighter, and more flexible as users always want. The enablers for integrated power electronics or more miniaturized power management includes increasing the frequency, advanced manufacturing, circuit and topology innovations, and system co-design. As a circuit designer, in the scope of this talk today, I will focus on circuit and topology innovations. To make the DC-DC regulator or integrated DC-DC regulators, we have uh, two main types of regulators here. It's a linear regulator and a switching regulator. So linear regulator is essentially made by a controllable switch in series with the load from input voltage. So the switch on resistance is controllable in series with the load resistance. That means it's actually very simple to implement, very easy regulation, fast transient response, it's very low noise and very area efficient, uh, very small size and highly scalable. However, it has one key drawback, its efficiency is limited by the ratio between the output and the input. So we go with the other types of switching regulators which ideally can reach up to the efficiency of 100%. There are three main types of switching regulators here, uh, including the switch inductor, switch capacitor, and the hybrid converters that combines the benefit of the switch inductor and switch capacitor. Switch inductor, as an example of the buck converter here, is uh, composed of the two switches at the input and the inductor and the output capacitors at the output. This converter transfers the charge from the input to output in forms of current in the inductor. So it can provide efficient, fine voltage regulation. However, it's a slower response compared with the linear regulator because it's mainly limited by the switching frequency. It's very popular for off-chip implementation. However, it's very difficult to integrate the inductor and it's not easy to scale in the integrated context. There are still a lot of efforts in both industry and academic for integrated switch inductor regulators. They often fall into two categories here. As a first row, there are modules with the inductor integrated into the package, the module. Or the other category is that all the inductors can be integrated on to the silicon or the interposer layer, they could reach to higher current density, but they need to switch at very high frequency and thus efficiency are not optimal. Another type of switching regulator is a switch capacitor DC to converter. The switch capacitor DC to converter is often operated in two phases. The switch capacitor DC to converter transfers charge in form of voltage in the flying capacitor from the input to output. The benefit of the switch capacitor circuit is that all the components, including flying capacitors and uh, switches, are readily integrated and scalable. They can actually achieve very fast response. As demonstrated in our ISSCC 2013 paper, efficiency degradation is one of the big drawback in uh, switch capacitor circuit for fine regulation. And we'll discuss it further in the next two slides. Integrated switch capacitor developments have been implemented in both academic and industry. From 2010 until now, there are a lot of switch capacitor papers still coming out. And notably, they achieve the current density close to 1 amp per millimeter square with a reasonably high efficiency of about 81% and above. Uh, the work from IBM in 2010 can achieve 2.3 amp per millimeter square with the use of deep trench capacitor that has the capacitance density of around 200 nanofarad per millimeter square or above. Switch capacitor DCC converter actually has one key drawback in terms of efficiency for fine regulation. And that is shown here. 
with the three reconfigurable topologies here, the converter can achieve peak efficiency at the optimal conversion ratio. However, when the output voltage or the conversion ratio deviates from that peak point, the efficiency linearly goes down. So to bridge the gap between the efficiency peaks here, we need to add more reconfigurable topologies in the middle. And that is exactly how the work from UCSD in 2014 ISSCC was done. That brings up the benefit of hybrid converter, where the strength of switch inductor converter and switch capacitor converter can be combined into a hybrid where we use both inductor and capacitor together in the topology. The strength of the inductor is a fine regulation, and the strength of the switch capacitor is a voltage leveling, or higher conversion ratio. As shown here, there are three works from MIT, Harvard, and Dartmouth College. They're all trying to exploit the benefit of both switch capacitor and switch inductors. In the work from MIT uh, by Robert Pilawar in 2011, the first transformation stage, which is formed by a switch capacitor, worked at a low frequency. The input of the regulation stage uh, forms as current sink uh, at the output of the transformation stage. That creates soft charging and discharging for the switch capacitor circuits. That reduces loss. The work from Guanyang Kim at Harvard, published in ISSCC in 2012, employs the three-level converter. The three-level converter utilizes flying capacitor to generate a meter voltage of V in over 2. And from these three levels of V in, V in over 2, and ground, the inductor can be switched appropriately between two of these voltages to generate fine voltage all the way from close to ground to V in by controlling the DD cycle of these switches. Compared with the buck converter, this three-level converter inductor only sees half of the input voltage. Thus, inductor can be smaller and can be integrated. The work from Dartmouth in 2014 is a very similar to the uh, three-level converter, but the combination of the inductor and capacitor is that the inductor can put directly in series with the capacitor and operate as a resonant tank, while the output voltage can be regulated just by off-time control. As a summary, I hope that by now we all agree that there's a clear need to have a very efficient integrated power supply for the future Internet of Everything systems, where we need them to be smaller, thinner, lighter, and more flexible. In order to do that, we can use integrated power converter topologies from switch inductor to switch capacitor and to hybrid converters. And I strongly believe that many more opportunities for innovations are still to come, including in circuit and topologies. More hybrid converters will actually be introduced to both the academic community and to the industry. For processing and packaging, there are many more methods to integrate more passive components more efficiently and how to 3D package them with active components to make a more energy efficient and power efficient system. Uh, for the system co-optimization, the power converter design will play a much more important role in the system design uh, because if all we care for the efficiency, then the power converter should be the first to probably decide how the system is designed. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you and goodbye.